Talking up the Hogs here at uh, the Voice of College Football. Welcome in to hear from uh, Ty Hudson from Pictorial Network after Arkansas concluded its spring sessions in Fayetteville. Ty, how are we doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing great, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. We're both trying to wake up right now, but we're going to kick it into <laughs> gear here to talk some Arkansas football. Uh, man, point number one is going to be a bad one. Point number two is going to be a bad one, but we're going to start there before we hit on the final scrimmage of the spring. And uh, Mike Woods, 32 catches two years ago, 33 catches last year, productive receiver, nine touchdowns total, has entered the transfer portal. Yeah, um, kind of a shock for a lot of Razorback fans. And uh, I realized probably by the time a lot of people are watching this, Razorback fans, this is kind of old news at this point. But this is big for, I mean, for bad reasons for Arkansas fans and for whoever gets Mike Woods' services. Um, it's, it's a pretty big – I mean, I'm not going to say it's a big blow because it's at a position where Arkansas can kind of absorb that blow. You've got an All-American – possibly first round caliber wide receiver and trail on Burks. But Mike Woods was, you know, was a strong number two guy, took advantage of Burks getting double teamed and getting a lot of the uh uh you know being targeted by the defense. Mike Woods was able to come through along with Devion Warren and and some other guys here and there. Um but yeah it's a a bit of a shock and fans are obviously hog fans aren't super pleased with it but i guess right now it is what it is at this point but probably the strongest position on the team on the offense for sure yeah yeah uh skill position they're in really good shape i mean they really are and you know they they recruited well at the position the last couple of years thanks to coach step who's now at south carolina that might be something worth keeping an eye on to see if woods follows his uh his his coach to South Carolina. <clears throat> I know we're going to touch on that in just a second, but yeah, that's a position. Uh, you know, you got the OU transfer in Crawford, Trey Knox, the 6'5", 210 pound uh, wide out who his freshman year stood out, and a lot of people thought he would be the star that Traylon Burks has become, and and roles of reverse there. And hopefully, that what happened last year was just a sophomore slump out of him. And he picks it up this year. But yeah, I mean, that's a position you feel really good about. Like I said, you could absorb that loss, but it's still um, an unfortunate loss for the Razorbacks. Getball.com again, voiceofcollegefootball.com. Even if you don't want a mask, register for free right there. Uh, we've got a store available with all sorts of items there. And of course, all of our content that's going to be expanded throughout the summer. So right now, you're basically, to be transparent, going to see a reflection of what you see here on the channel. But as we build out, we just launched the site. Please uh, give us a look there at voiceofcollegefootball.com. Got Ty Hudson on the line to talk Arkansas football. We always enjoy the conversation, get a ton of great feedback when Ty's on the line with us to talk hogs. Enoch Jackson, uh, you talked about wide receiver being a plethora of depth and talent, uh, not necessarily along the interior defensive front, and Enoch Jackson appeared to have an opportunity there. Uh, a 2019 signee, 37th rated defensive tackle at the time of his uh, signing out of Texas, mm -hmm. who looked to be a primary in the rotation, possibly, but uh, he has decided to move on, apparently. Yeah, and that's another one that's, uh, I mean, not completely out of nowhere. There'd kind of been some rumors that he maybe got a good butt chewing by, by a uh, member of the coaching staff, but I, I, I mean, that happens every day. That should be no reason why anyone enters a transfer portal. I mean, uh, I got my butt chewed more than once, and and it's a part of it, you know, when you play sports. So I, I don't know that that's really what happened. If if there was some kind of bad reaction to a uh, to a coach getting on to him, um, it was it 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 is surprising though. I mean, that is a position that they are. It's one. Of, it's it's a weird situation where the last couple of years they've done really well recruiting there. Uh, you go back to Chad Morris's first, you know, his two classes. I mean, I thought he did pretty well along the uh, line of scrimmage on the defensive front. And uh, and yet they've really, no one's really shined. I mean, Dorian Gerald, who was the number, what, number one, number two Juco defensive end, hasn't, he's, he's been unable to stay healthy. And even when he's been healthy, and granted, he's missed a lot of time his, his couple of years uh, at Arkansas, 
we, we still just haven't seen enough out of him. And then, you know, you go across the line, you know, Jackson is somebody Miller out of Warren who actually came up with Traylon Burks. People forget about him. Uh, and then of course, last year you had Jonathan Marshall who stood out and he was really your only strength at, at, on the defensive line. And, and even his numbers weren't superb and, you know, now he's in the draft. So now you lose Jackson. And uh, the question really is, who's going to stand out on the defensive line at a position where you, despite having decent numbers, not great, but decent numbers, who's going to stand out along the line of scrimmage up there? And and he was someone that was really improving and looked like he was going to make rotation. There is always that possibility he he pulls himself out of the out of the transfer portal. After all, they did manage to pull Devin Bush out of the portal uh, a little while back. Um, when, when was that? Last year, I think. But uh, maybe they can do that with him. I hope they do. I hope they can do it with Mike Woods. But um, it, right now, it appears so far that, that those two names out of Arkansas are in the portal and at the moment are not expected to come out of it. I'm looking at the numbers from the uh... – Spring scrimmage, and uh, if you hit the red, you're a winner, 30 to 20. That matters. Um, but uh, in terms of Mike Woods, uh, had a couple big plays. It must be an odd feeling to step on the football field knowing that you're going to enter your name into the transfer portal in a day or two, but uh, you're still playing with the team. Uh, nobody else knows it, or maybe somebody does uh, at that point. But uh, what made uh, sense to you? about this scrimmage in regards to something meaningful that we can take from this. Let's start with the offense. On offense, so last time you and I talked, uh, I'd gone to the second scrimmage, and the offense did, did not click. I mean, the off, you know, the quarterback wide receivers were not on the same page. Uh, you know, overthrown, underthrown balls, drop balls, putting the ball in the field too, or putting the ball on the ground too much, Malik Hornsby. Um who did do that, I think, at least once and then another time, but that was on the running backs. That uh, was his fault, TJ Hammonds, I was told. Um, and I did re-watch the scrimmage, but I think I'm all the way up until that point, so I haven't actually had a chance to watch watch that on the screen yet. But uh, at, at the stadium, I was told it was, it was on TJ Hammonds. Um, the fluidity looked a lot better, and KJ Jefferson, man, he came out on fire. I don't think he threw an incompletion in that first quarter. Um, I, you know, I, I was really impressed with what he was able to do. I, I, he clearly is your quarterback one. I've had some people give me some pushback on that. Well, but Malik Hornsby's faster. Okay. Well, Malik Hornsby is also putting the ball in the field entirely too much. He looks like he panics. And the first thing he wants to do is run out of the pocket and just take off and run. We haven't seen the passing side yet in a scrimmage where he looks solidified. He didn't do terrible. Uh, that's the one thing I don't have are his numbers, but I think, it, oh, no, I do. Here it is, 11 of 18 for 144 yards and a touchdown. He also had a, a couple of nice runs. That's not bad. 11 of 18, you'll take that any day of the week, 144 yards. He probably at that point had a couple hundred yards of offense, and and you got to consider that was in, what, two little more than two quarters of play. That's not terrible, but he still he threw what should have been at least two interceptions that were dropped by defenders. He was overthrowing and underthrowing. Uh, he looked a little panicked in the pocket. I am hopeful. I, I do think he has a really high ceiling, and if he sticks it out, who knows what Hornsby's capable of doing. And I do like his speed. I, kid looks like he drops like a low four four, which is insane for a for a quarterback. Again, that's just the eye test, right? Watch him. Probably runs like a four six forty, but I mean, you get it. He's he looks quick, and even safeties and corners who have an angle on him or outside linebackers, he just runs right by them. That is a that's an aspect of his game that could come could come into advantage for Arkansas. And I'm sure they'll have a package for him during the regular season. But KJ throughout this scrimmage to me was just clearly he's on another level. His passing game is is far more developed. I'm sure he has a, a better understanding of the offense. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I thought another guy that kind of stood out, John David White, a walk on receiver. You know, he's 5'11", I think he's 180, 185 pounds, was targeted six times, caught five passes for almost 90 yards and a touchdown. And he did a really good job of when the play would break down, quarterback could roll out of the pocket, and he was there, you know, helping to extend the play and find a way to get open and, you know, catch and check down throws. John David s stood out. Um, 
Knox, again, we talked about him earlier, a guy that I really hope, I really hope last year was just a sophomore slump. He could be he could be a dangerous weapon, especially in the red zone with that size, 6'5, 210 pounds. He caught a beautiful 50-50 jump ball where he adjusted midair and came down with the catch. It was a great catch. Um, yeah, I, the offense honestly looked really good. And I think Sam Pittman and the staff was was pretty pleased. You know, they don't want to give away too much, but I'm sure they they look pretty pleased to me. Pittman had a little bit of a smile on his face when talking about it. So offensively, yeah, they look like they're being they're they're being fine tuned, and we'll see how they look coming out of fall camp and or going into and coming out of fall camp. Obviously, that's when it's most important. There's always that quandary in evaluating a spring game to say, okay, every time there's a good play on one side of the ball, what happened there? Was it a good, truly a good play or a bad play yeah. by the other team? side which obviously the good guys are on both sides when it all comes down to it in the fall uh i guess the one thing you can say about the offense making plays though is that if the offense per your example from the previous scrimmage the offense could be misfiring on throws they could be dropping throws um and then the defense didn't do anything to prevent that they were just the beneficiary of bad offensive play, and and the result is an incomplete or whatever that's negative for the offense. Whereas if the offense is connecting, that's truly that's truly a positive play. If if you follow me there, yeah. Um, so so that so that's a good sign. <laughs> that is a good sign. Defensively, um, your your thoughts about who stood out over there? Well, Dorian Gerald. Once again, was in the backfield at least at least once or twice. I thought Enoch Jackson. I think he made a couple of good plays. He blew past Ty Clary on the offensive line um, at least once that I saw early on in the game. Which could be good news for somebody else. We don't know who that is yet. But, yeah, it could uh, be good news for somebody else. I mean, he had a couple couple of moments. I think uh, it looked like he assisted pretty well in the run game. As did Dorian Gerald, and an issue with Dorian Gerald has been obviously not being able to stay healthy, but also not taking plays off. And I, it looked to me like, for the most part, he was involved in, in a lot. Like it didn't seem like he was taking plays off. Jalen Catalan is still every bit Jalen Catalan as one would expect. I mean, he he clearly just man, it's like he knows what's about to happen before it happens. You know, he he's just there and he's there making plays. He did get burned on by Traylon Burks uh, on a uh, – I don't remember what route it was. It wasn't a fade, but uh, he angled towards the sidelines and quarterback hit Traylon Burks. on It was K.J. Jefferson on a beautiful throw, and, and Burks beat Catalan. That was really the only the only time, and that's understandable. I mean, it is. I mean, you're talking about a possible first-round draft pick beating him out, but Catalan was in on so many plays, and yet – I don't think he played at all in the second half, or maybe he did, and, and it was kind of situational. They rotated him and out, uh, him in in and out. Uh, Miles Slusher, they had lined up at corner, and I thought that was interesting. This is a guy last year as a true freshman found his way onto the field and didn't just didn't just stand out there and participate. I mean, he made I think he had two forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, he had I think at least a couple of passes defended. Uh, I don't remember how many tackles. I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight or nine tackles. Again, he's a freshman. He was kind of in uh, rotation. I think he played for an injured injured player. But he was lining up at corner, and as opposed to safety, again, where he where he was recruited to play and where he played last year, he's got the speed to play the position, but I thought that was interesting. Um, but, yeah, I, I, the guys that you expect to stand out stood out. Blair, Simeon Blair, who's someone in the first couple of scrimmages looked really good. I didn't see him. I didn't see his name called out as much, but uh, he was definitely around the ball quite a bit from what I could tell, or at least it looked like from the angle that I saw. Um, yeah, there, there were kind of what you expected. You know, again, it was an off. It was actually, an, I think, an offensive favored scrimmage as opposed to the second one, which was favored by the defense. But uh, the offense was, I mean, Mark, they were fast. I, I they, they looked faster than they did last year with uh, Franks at quarterback. Obviously, those are in live game situations. We didn't have a scrimmage last year, but we didn't have spring camp at all last year. But uh, it just looks so quick. And the defense, I thought, did a pretty good job for the most part, especially in the second half, keeping up with the pace of the offense. But 
Uh, the backup linebackers look pretty good, um, but there's still a lot of questions there, depth and quality depth and what have you. But, uh, yeah, the guys you expected to show out showed out, and uh, we saw a lot of backups come in, a lot of, a lot of younger guys. Um, but for the most part, I thought uh, Catalan stood out to me. Uh, the most of anything on defense, it was definitely Catalan's game. I, I think he, you know, tackle-wise, stats on paper-wise, he may not have stood out, but he was in, it seemed like, on every single play. Got Ty Hudson on the line from Pig Trail Network. Uh, please join him right there. Uh, joins us on a regular basis to break down the hogs. We appreciate him coming on here. No doubt about that. You mentioned no spring last year. So for the first year head coach, this was ridiculous to try to deal with last year, considering any first year head coach, unless you're Ryan Day taking over for Urban Meyer, 90 some percent of the time, it's a situation where you're taking over a bad program. There's a reason you just got hired. Uh, the previous guy got fired because they were losing football games. And that was to the nth degree, the case at Arkansas and going 0-16 in the SEC the two previous seasons. So on top of that responsibility of trying to turn over a roster, trying to uh, you know, change the culture, do all those things that we know, in last year's situation, trying to do that without having the opportunity to meet face to face, have a spring practice, trying to trying to train change terminology, culture, build relationships, do all those things that you're trying to do, you know, across the board, and to do that absent of face to face contact for a long time until the summer, Sam Pittman was able to do that, and it looked like a completely forget the three and seven record that obviously the Auburn game could have been four easy. And there were some other opportunities there. They were such a improved football team that um, is Pittman talking at all just about the the opportunity finally to have a real off season with his team and to to do all those things that you can't do in season because you're running around at hundred miles an hour about teaching, instructing the foundation of the the fundamentals, all those things that they're able to cover. Uh, now that they finally have a spring session. Yeah, I mean, you could tell when you listen to him talk about it, he doesn't want to waste a second. And I think he's mentioned it before, that being a huge disadvantage. Um, and obviously, this is verbatim. This isn't anything that he said. I'm not quoting him, but you could tell just by listening to him talk about it over the last several weeks, uh, or even dating back to last year, that, look, they they were kind of pressed up against the wall and had – obviously limited time and you can make that argument with everybody right but like you mentioned you're a new coaching staff you took over i mean let's just call it what it is it was a dumpster fire i mean the previous three years were awful recruiting took a turn for the worst and i'll, I'll say this i know i'm i am a uh, i'm a fan of the chad morris was an awful head coach crowd i get it he was but the one thing i think he did do okay in was at least bringing talent here i mean after all the guys that are balling out on both sides of the ball are his guys um it's just he couldn't coach worth it well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say what i the, the particular word i want to want to use there but his ability to bring in like jalen catalan i remember him bragging a lot about catalan bringing these guys bringing the horses to the barn was impressive and Pittman. Still, though, I mean, you're talking about a program that doesn't have a great reputation. This isn't the Bobby Petrino era anymore. Um, this is, you know, it's it just is what it is. And he's had, to, you know, he had to face that. He had to face the idea of, you know what, I've got a whole new staff around me, and now we've got to go recruit. Oh, wait, we can't because of this goofy debt period that extended. It seemed like it was going to be extended throughout all eternity. And uh, that was a disadvantage and not having spring camp and being limited and really having to keep an eye on just what the NCAA is telling you what you can and can't do as a program. Uh, that, that was always hovering over their heads. I know it was. So you could tell he doesn't want to waste a minute. He doesn't want to waste a second. He wants to utilize every moment they have together as a program uh, to get better. And I agree with him, you know, he, he said on, I think it was on Paul Feinbaum, where he said, you know, I've got 20 guys. You know, we have, I think they're tied for the most amount of returning starters in college football coming back. They have who they need right now. And uh, I think everyone seems to me like, other than the guys that are in the transfer portal, maybe there's more to come. I'm sure there will be. I mean, that's just how this thing works. We are in a new era of college football now. Uh, free agency has hit college football, um, as it has all sport, uh, 
NCAA sports, collegiate athletics. But uh, I mean, again, you just you could tell that most of this team is bought in. It looks to me that way. What I've seen on both on television, watching the scrimmage at home, and being there, you know, when the screens are shut off, and the stuff that you don't see on ESPN or SEC Network. I mean, the 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 players coming and and uh, doing the hog call with the crowd and all that stuff that they've done through spring camp. I mean, you could tell just by looking at their faces, they're bought in and they're ready to go. And this staff. You know, they've had some changes here and there, but this staff, I think, uh, has done a great job of getting these guys bought in, and uh, they're ready to go. I, I think they're they're ready to get fall camp here and, and get ready for the for the uh, 2021 season. Ty, you mentioned uh, the name Bobby Petrino. <laughs> so what goes through the average college football fan's mind is the, 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 the image of him in front of a, a podium of microphones. Yes, perfect the depiction there. That's it. Yep. Uh, I think people forget the consecutive top 10 finishes going to major bowl games, two consecutive years, because I think uh, from, from the conversations I have with your standard college football fan, that's maybe an sec fan of another team or elsewhere is that eh, Arkansas is in the sec West best they could hope for is Mississippi state old miss level go six and six, seven and five. That's pretty much what you can expect. That's all you can do. But Houston Nutt proved otherwise. Bobby Petrino proved otherwise. You know, they won 10, 11 games two consecutive years and went to Cotton and Sugar Bowls. Mm -hmm. Like, it can be done there. Yeah, it's, it's tough, but it can be done. It's a gauntlet. In the SEC, and I have my own opinion on Arkansas in the SEC, but uh, I think it was uh, Jack Crow who told Frank Broyles when when Frank Broyles was talking about entering the SEC, he told him, you know, we have a hard time. And this was Jack Crow talking to Frank Broyles. We have a hard time with one Texas. We're about to go into a conference that has like two or three Texases. And that is, I think on a level, that's true. Granted, when when Texas is down, look, they're down. When they're up, they're, they're capable of winning national titles. And the problem with the SEC is when Auburn's up, they're a playoff contender. It's been a while, I know, but they are. I mean, when they're at their height, they're a playoff contender. LSU sure. at their height, they can win national championships. Alabama can win. We know what Alabama could do, right? Uh, Mississippi State is capable of nine, eight, nine wins a year. Ole Miss is, you know, when they're playing on a level ground and they're not up to what Hugh Freeze did at that at that university, they're capable of, of doing really well and so on and so forth. Arkansas and, of course, A&M, who I think, might be a team to keep an eye on in 2021 just because of where you know Jimbo Fisher has that program rocking and rolling as much as I hate to say that Mark it kills me inside to say that but Arkansas is a job where you can you can get to a point where Houston Nutt had you in the conversation at least at the top of the West Petrino had you had you there Houston Nutt did win the West you know he did beat Bama he beat he beat you know the the blue bloods of this conference maybe not Obviously, the win loss totals aren't, you know, don't really favor Arkansas. Of course, they don't. You know, Arkansas is, they have everything going for them outside of geography. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're just in a state that doesn't produce enough talent. But guess what? Boosters, uh, facilities, you know, the money, the influence, they have it. I mean, my God, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys is a, is a Arkansas alum. You've got Tyson, Walmart, JB Hunt. Uh, you've got major influences here in the state of Arkansas. You're the program in the state of Arkansas. Who gives who gives a rat's rear about Arkansas State? I hate to say that. I've got friends that are that are family, in fact, that went to Arkansas State, UCA. You can say the same thing. But they're it. They're they're the premier school in this conference. And you see what they're doing in baseball. You see what they did in basketball this year. You see what they're doing across all sports. Mark, they're killing it. I mean, softball. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be surprised if they have a water polo team. I mean, everyone's ranked. It's capable of happening here. Football is just a little different. It is tougher. I admit that. The, it's a lot harder to build a program in football from the ground up like Pittman's being asked to do. Can he reach what Petrino or, well, let's just say what Houston Nutt was able to do. You know, Houston Nutt's first year here, and I, I was in, gosh, I think I was in eighth grade. Mm. I'm His a little first older year. than that. I was I was actually covering those games, so <laughs> I was, I was I at those trying games. to make you feel old. I promise. <laughs> but his first year, maybe you recall, he wasn't expected to do what he did. I think I think people were saying, "Yeah, they'll make a bowl, and that's about it." And, and they went on and 
had a, had a great year and, and did it again the second year, something similar. I think a game less the following year, maybe two, but yep. it can happen at Arkansas. It, it's, it's capable. It may not be as constant as it is at other schools like LSU and Bama, but it, it can happen here. And we've seen it. Like you mentioned, Houston Nutt and Petrino proved. And Brett Bielema had them trending in that direction, and all of a sudden the wheels fell off. And so, yeah, I think if they give Pittman time, I think he can get them there, or at least something close to it. I always enjoy the conversation with Ty Hudson from Pig Trail Network. So jump on over there, check out his work and the rest of the staff there at Pig Trail Network, talking Arkansas football. Ty, we always get uh, good feedback every time you're on here. People love having you on here, hearing the Arkansas football take and uh, – hearing you chop it up. I apologize if I was a little rough or, or sounded rough today. I'm battling a, I don't know if it's a head cold or allergies or what, dealing with homeschool and trying to get all this stuff done. But Mark, when you said you, you wanted me on, I, I absolutely, I made room for it. I always enjoy coming on here. You're a gamer. We appreciate it, Ty. <laughs> I appreciate that. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we will be tracking you down when all sorts of news starts to break because I think it's going to be a more than active summer more than usual with transfer portal and again less commits to date than usual therefore once the dead period ends there's going to be all sorts of uh student athletes that are ready and eager to announce their commitments it's it's uh yeah kick the tires and light the fires it's about to get crazy <laughs>